you trust your intuition? Well, education and experience along with intuition should not be ignored. There was a current study that showed that doctors' intuitive feelings warrant taking action. This research showed that doctors who experience their gut feelings about serious illness in children should not ignore it. So, what do you think about that? Do I you think, do that? I absolutely do. I think it's, in fact, I think it's critical to do that. It really shows how much you care about the person that's involved. And the caring sets up a relationship that's a deep one, and it's not just with each other, but it's a relationship with spirit. I think that uh, we should definitely look at our gut feelings and pay attention to them. You know, the thing that was interesting about this study was that it showed that it didn't really make any difference whether the doctor was more experienced or really did have very little experience. It was just important to follow their intuition. But my question is, I wonder what the insurance companies will think about it or how they'll react to that because they have their rules, you right. know. Well, that could be a problem because if doctors start ordering tests, that are tests that are not the right tests according to their way of thinking, then they're not going to be reimbursed and a hospital is going to be stuck with the bill and who is ever employing that doctor is going to have a talk with the doctor and say, you better wise up here and not just keep doing that. But I'm not so sure that will be a major issue because medicine is about caring. It's about listening and caring and being present. It's not so much about uh, treating a set of symptoms with a bag of tools. But sometimes it's just a feeling too when you just like remember that story that you told when you were in um, residency and you would go into the room of the patient mm -hmm. and you would try to guess at what their diagnosis was? Yeah we wouldn't go in the room actually we'd be right at the doorstep and we'd look and we'd smell and we'd, we'd uh, just get the feeling of the sounds of uh, everything that was in the room and believe it or not we could make the diagnosis a lot of the time and some of it was given away by the kind of equipment with, that was there. But there's something intuitive about uh, the practice of medicine, which makes it more than a science and makes it an art. And that's a, a large part of what we do in healthcare. And if we ignore that, I think we give away the, one of the most powerful tools we have to connect with people through spirit. I think that's how it used to be before we had all these fancy tests and technology was the doctors had to use their intuition a lot. Right. They would even pray. And there are lots of studies on prayer. I mean, look up Larry Dossie's work on prayer and see how, how powerful this is. And there are a lot of stories that I could tell you about. One in particular was one that I just saw on the internet the other day, which really moved me a lot. It was a man who was in his 50s or 60s who had a heart attack, was rushed to the the emergency room where they resuscitate him and finally after about a half an hour they gave up and pronounced him dead. And the cardiologist who was there running the show uh, thought about it as he was walking away and then he heard this voice inside of his head that said, go back and resuscitate one more time. And when you do that, get yourself into a trance where you're, you're going to have a prayer that goes with this. And he tried to ignore the feeling but he couldn't really. And so he wound up going back to the, to the place where the, where the body was, and there was still a doctor there, and he said, would you please shock this patient one more time with a defibrillator? And the doctor said, what are you kidding? This man's dead. You're not going to be able to resuscitate him. He said, just for me, just this one time, please shock him one more time. And because the man was a friend, he did. The man woke up. I mean, the, it was a successful thing, and today that man is alive. What happened there? How does prayer and intuition and listening and caring and supporting fit into the healing process? It's immense. You know, I think a lot of it, too, is trusting yourself and trusting your intuition because many times really? people don't trust it. So if you really listen, you know, Oprah Winfrey there. talks about the whisper. She says, uh -huh. listen to the whisper. But also, tell, tell another story. Tell the story about what happened with Mike. Yeah, my brother Mike... Uh, had a kind of an unusual situation happen. He had been having some problems with chest pain, and he actually eventually had a coronary arteriogram, which was completely normal. And so they said, don't have to worry about his chest pain because he's not having a heart attack. Well, years later, he continued to have some chest pains, and in one situation, he got up in the morning, passed out, was rushed to the emergency room, and was found there with a heart rate of about 30, and it slowly went down to about zero. And they were about ready to put the defibrillator on him when he woke up. It was a very frightening experience. And they decided that he better have a pacemaker because he had to have a heartbeat, you know, a rate that was at least 40 or 50. So they put a pacemaker in through the left arm into the heart. And about the next day, they found that there was a collapsed lung on the right side. Now, 
the pacemaker was put in through the left side, there's no way it could have gotten to the right side. So what he had was a punctured lung called a pneumothorax that was a, uh, an incidental finding they couldn't explain. And then I don't know why, but for some reason I put two and two together. And I thought, do you know my father had attacks like that? And we never figured out what it was. And he died at 86 of something unrelated to it. So it wasn't really something that got worked out much. But a bell went off someplace. And it said, familial Mediterranean fever. And I'm going, what? What's that? <laughs> Maybe heard it in medical school, yeah, but that was the end of it. That was that. I never Nobody heard ever it. gets that. No. And so where did that come from? I mean, I had no patience with it. I've never heard of a patient having that in my experience. And yet that jumps into my, into my brain. So I followed up, do the test. Indeed, he has familial Mediterranean fever, which now we can treat with a drug called colchicine that solves his problem. And you know what's interesting is that it blew all the other doctors away. It was like, how did you know that? How it did blew you me away. That? <laughs> no idea. So where do things like this come from? I mean, is this intuitive thing uh, something within us? Is it something that's outside of us? Is it something that comes to us through spirit? Uh, where does it come from? Well, there was another patient that you had, Carol, that came to see you. A doctor had called you and wanted you to take a look at her. Mm -hmm. And to just make the story a little bit shorter, you had a feeling that something was really serious, but you didn't know what. And you took her yourself over to the hospital. Right. And the doctor that was caring for her had a gut feeling. Right. And he had a feeling that she might have a tumor in her heart. And it turned out that's what she had. And they Incredible. operated and she Saved almost died, life. but she lived. And Unbelievable. <laughs> Where do these things come from? Because it's not your experience. It comes from that connection we have with our deepest part of who we are, with our higher self, perhaps, with spirit. And it's very much related to caring, which I think is what makes a good doctor different from just a regular doctor who looks at the scientific side of how bodies are put together with their biochemistry. So should doctors follow their gut feelings? You bet. I think if they don't follow their gut the feelings, I'd be worried as long as it's not frivolous because what, what you think and what you believe has a profound effect on your physiology and your biochemistry and it has a profound effect on the relationship that you have with your patients.